All right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Easter. Easter. Um, yeah, the video is coming out a little bit later today. Uh, usually it's 6 a.m. on a Sunday. Uh, I'm putting it out, you know, Sunday evening because you know, it was Easter. That's my excuse. Uh, look what I just got. I got this uh, this Tascam, uh, this very cheap Tascam uh, cassette tape recorder. It's a four track recorder. Uh, and I've started using that as a, um, I just bought it it's because of a kind of an impulse uh, buy. I just saw that on eBay and I just, I just literally thought it was a cool thing to, to have. And it was cheap and I got it. And uh, I started messing around with it and playing with it. Turns out it's a very, very cool practice tool. It's basically teaching you how to record how they used to record back in the day, you know, like no software, no editing, no punching in. It's actually quite hard to punch in. And um, I want to talk about it a little bit in that video, you know, just want to make it five minutes and just want to say that um, using that has, uh, over the course of the couple of days, I've been messing around with it and uh, kind of trying to find an idea for a little intro jam for this video. Um, I've improved a ton on my music musicality, playing, um, you know, simple parts, but playing them well, and also crafting uh, simple parts. Here, the idea was to craft uh, multiple guitar parts that will work really well together. You know, it's a four track. Uh, so the idea was to have three rhythm parts and one lead part and uh, try and make them work well without, you know, getting in the way of each other. And uh, it, it's a great exercise to do that because you, you have to do that by actually really crafting the part and, and preparing the part before you record it, right? Really thinking about what you're going to play um, and playing it well. The thing about those is there's no editing, there's no um, punching in even, there's no quantize, of course. Um, you can now slow down things and then speed them, speed them back up and all that stuff. I guess you could with the speed control and the and the cassette tape recorder. It's it's very, you know, it's very unprecise. Uh, so you couldn't really do what you can do with modern technology and editing. And uh, you can't really do, um, which is a shame. You can't really do comping. So, so that's the thing. You know, um, that these days I rely so much on, um, especially when recording solos and things like that. Comping is so useful because you can record. You know, you can put a part in a loop and record over and over again until you get it right. And then you can comp um, little snippets of multiple takes. Uh, but with this, obviously you can't do it. Uh, so it's just a great tool. You know, it's um, it's it's also a great tool for jamming and recording ideas, of course. And um, I like the idea of just having a cassette tape and having the thing fully physical and literally not needing a computer. So it could be, uh, you know, if you really wanna be old school, you could be on the road somewhere and instead of taking a laptop with you to record ideas and record demos, just take one of those and record, record all the demos on a cassette tape. Um, I just find it really cool and really fun. And it's just a change um, in, in my process. You know, I'm going to start recording ideas on this and, and use it more consistently because it's, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, so that's the, the, the one I bought. I saw online that there is uh, a bunch of other ones that Tascam has made over the years. There are some bigger ones you can get. Uh, I even went into an, an internet rabbit hole of people creating studio setups without a DAW and, and re recording everything to tape, um, which is something that now I'm kind of <laughs> wanting to do. So, um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Get it. Uh, if you find one, get it. It's super cheap. You can find it, and uh, you know, you, 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 I'm sure you can find one of those at your local like thrift shop or something like that. Otherwise, you can look it up online. Although, because there's a, a resurgence of people wanting those to do lo-fi type of stuff, because now there's more of it's kind of a trend of lo-fi in the world of music production. Uh, it looks like the price of some of those is going up because a lot of people are interesting to do uh, cassette tape looping and and uh, processing. Actually, it, it's really cool for lo-fi guitars. So if you want a really cool, if you want to get a really cool lo-fi guitar sound, uh, you could get one of those. It works really, really well. But yeah, anyway, that's it. The video is literally just about me uh, telling you how cool it was to practice with this and how much of a good practice tool it can get if you want to be, you know, a better player, a more musical player. Um, that can also prepare people who want to get into session work. You know, I know it's not really a thing anymore, um, being a session player, going in the studio day in and day out, but just, you know, just being a good musician in general, just being able to on the spot 
come up with good crafting good musical parts on your instrument in that case on the guitar and recording them with no errors with good timing no no editing no quantizing no punching and none of that stuff and um and yes yeah, so uh give it a try i'll keep practicing with it and i will see you on the next episode bye bye <laughs>